Atlanta Dream Basketball is brought to you by Coca-Cola. It is an absolute beautiful Saturday evening in Atlanta, and we welcome you to the Gateway Center Arena in College Park as the Atlanta Dream play host to the New York Liberty. Both teams trying to end the streaks teams don't like, and Atlanta dropping their last two, while the Liberty dropping four are their last five contests. But let's go back to May 29th when both of these teams met. It gave you all the highlights you wanted, but none bigger than this shot from Courtney Williams at the buzzer for the win. She finished with 31 points. Dream pushed their win streak at that point to four, and they're looking to see if they can bring that same energy right here to Gateway Center Arena. I'm Angel Gray alongside Tabitha Turner-Wilkins. Welcome back, Tabitha. Good to have you back. But as far as the Dream, they're looking to bounce back. They've lost their last two, their last one being at home. They did play without Tiffany Hayes, who has been out four to six weeks with an MCL tear. However, they did get Kennedy Carter back, and she showed everyone why her name is Hollywood. Yeah, Carter, she had that hyperextended elbow back the last time they played New York. She suffered that injury, had 12 points prior to exiting that game, missed the next six games. But Angel, as you mentioned, she came back with the vengeance versus Minnesota. She had 16 points and shot over 58% from the field. Well, Tabitha, another thing for Atlanta is... They were missing not only Tiffany Hayes, but also a big piece from their bench with Monique Billings, who missed the last game due to illness. Good news for Atlanta. They do get her back. What do you think her presence brings to this team? I mean, they are going to definitely need her. New York last time struggled with Billings switching off on her. Their guards had a hard time defending her off of those pick and rolls, handoffs. The rotation of the ball through the top of the key, so they'll definitely need Monique to score, as well as her defensive tenacity tonight if they want to come out successful against New York. Tabitha, let's be real. Liberty looking for a little bit of revenge after that May 29th matchup. It came at the buzzer. Two players that were absolutely phenomenal in that matchup are also still on fire to this point. The former dream player, Vanessa Elena, also who was playing phenomenal for them last year, but Michaela Onyenwede, who is leading all rookies in points. Yeah, Owen Yede drafted number six overall for New York, dropped a career-high 29 points against Atlanta, leads all rookies by 63 points and points per game. And Laney, I mean, the 2020 most improved player with the Atlanta Dream, ranked fifth in scoring in the league right now, definitely making her case for MVP. 12 of 12 from the free throw line the last time Atlanta saw her. So the Dream will definitely not have to foul in order to keep them successful here tonight. All right, New Tabitha, York. well, Saturday Night Hoops all on the way between two teams. Hogar for a win. We got matchup next. I don't know if Courtney Williams has ever seen a day where she was like, I don't look good. She has a in the world, but for tonight's starting lineups, which are presented by the Georgia Lottery, we'll start with the opposing team, the New York Liberty, Sammy Wickham, Benijah Laney, Rebecca Allen, Michaela Onyenwede, Kyla, Kylie Shook, is for the starting lineup for the Liberty and for the home team, the Atlanta Dream. Second consecutive starting lineup we're seeing from this team with Tiffany Hayes out due to, due to an MCL tear. Cheyenne Parker, Elizabeth Williams, Kennedy Carter, her second game back. Courtney Williams and Odyssey Sims, who has been lights out for this team as well. Having some back-to-back -back games in double figures where she's been absolutely phenomenal scoring from the outside but as far as the leader in charge for the liberty the second season for walt hopkins he was the main coach of the month he had the best start in over a decade that landed him that honor as well he also spent some time prior to this gig with the Lynx. Cheryl uh, reeve was mentoring him and he also has a title with the Lynx as well so we'll see what we can take place here in atlanta and on the other side interim head coach Mike Peterson. Tabitha, I know that when we were speaking with him before the game, he just mentioned the energy his team needs to play with, as well as the defensive effort that he wants to see improved on from the previous night, where they just didn't have enough to close that game. He said, we put ourselves in position, but we have to make sure that we do all the little things right tonight. I'm Angel Gray alongside Tabitha Turner-Wilkins, and this is the second matchup between Atlanta and the Liberty. As we mentioned before, Atlanta beat them at home in overtime, 90 to 87. That pushed their win streak to four. And something you mentioned right out of the gate was the defensive effort. Odyssey Sims gets a hand on it at the top of the key. Benijah Laney passes it off, works its way around the rim, and Sabrina Unescu actually gets the bucket 
to go down. And in SQ, I mean, the dream held her to just six points, her first single digit scoring effort of the season. So she is one of the players who's definitely looking to get off to a quick start here versus Atlanta as Cheyenne Parker goes up for this easy layup underneath. It's a good response from Cheyenne Parker who said, I want to be better for my team offensively. Good to see her getting into a rhythm right away. And another block underneath as well. That one's on Kylie Shook. So not only is she doing what she said she wanted to do and improve on offensively, defensively, Coach Mike Peterson also said, you have to be better. You see how she's protecting the paint. And you know what her response was? She said, I took that personally. When he challenged me on the defensive end, I've got to be better. And right here, Cheyenne Parker has been better already at the start of this game. Guarded by the rookie out of UCLA. Kayla Onyenwere, who's been absolutely phenomenal in her rookie season. That baseline jumper by Kennedy Carter is no good. Wickham hands it off to Shook. And the dream will allow Shook to take that shot all game until she hits it as Sammy Wickham comes through with another three-pointer for her first of the game for the Liberty. But Sammy Wickham is not a player that they want to shoot from the outside as well. She's tied for second and three-point field goals made in the league. That was her 37th three. Courtney Williams working at the top of the key, passes it off to Cheyenne Parker, who air mills it underneath, and Sabrina Ionescu will take the ball out. Sabrina Ionescu was actually coming off of the bench for quite some time, dealing with some tendonitis in that ankle. On their West Coast trip, she actually missed two of the games, coming back, trying to still get into her rhythm. Her first six games, she scored in double figures and still trying to get into a rhythm from that point. And that first game, like I mentioned, that she started off the single-digit scoring was versus Atlanta. The defense of that game held her to just six points. Courtney Williams with her baseline jumper. That one doesn't go, and Shook comes down with the rebound. Shook turns down the top of the key three. And Wickham trying to work the two-man game. Passes it off to Benijah Laney in the corner. Less than 10 on the shot clock. She pulls up the long two. And that doesn't go for New York. Excellent defense by Elizabeth Williams to close out the way she did and get a hand up from the vision for Laney not to see the basket as well as she usually does. So far, New York trying to keep Courtney Williams out of the paint. They've done a good job doing so. But Cheyenne Parker, a nice look underneath, but can't convert. And right here, Cheyenne Parker's got to let that play go. She missed a point blank layup to possibly win the game versus Minnesota as Laney goes inside for two. But Cheyenne Parker beat herself up pretty bad against that, min that Minnesota game, missing that layup. So next play, Cheyenne Parker, next play. Benajah Laney on the board. For New York, the former dream player who last year put on a show in the Wubble, walked away as the most improved player for the W. Odyssey Sims working the top of the key, rises up, can't get that one to go, and right now Atlanta just struggling from the field. Oh, you know what, that's a spot that she can get hot from, that three-point range is well within her capabilities of her game. Just a miscommunication on the Atlanta side as that one flies out of bounds. That's actually going to be their first turner, turnover for the night. And Tiana Hawkins comes in for Cheyenne Parker after spending three minutes on the court. So Liberty with an 8-2 lead over Atlanta right now. Benijah Laney guarded by Odyssey Sims. A lot of action trying to get the ball out of her hands. Five on the shot clock, time running down. Pressure at the top of the key, a zip on the inside to Shook that floats out of bounds. So with the pressure for Atlanta, we talked with Coach Peterson as well. He said, I'm going to mix it up on the defensive end. You saw how that was played and how they sped them up a bit. Exactly, and I don't think that New York, with all the defenses that are coming at them, it's hard for them to run an offense and get set in that offense. So right there, very good defense by Atlanta Dream to shake things up and kind of confuse the New York offense into a turnover. On top of the key, you knew it was coming. Tiana Hawkins is charged with the offensive foul as Benajah Laney was trying to work herself 
himself over the top of the key, and you can see it right here, Tabitha. Yeah, Courtney Williams tries to get the screen from Hawkins. She's a little bit too late. Draws the offensive foul, but you know, they've also got to close that screen up just a little bit, tighten it up a little bit so there's not as much room for the defensive player to slide through the screen. You see the communication with Coach Peterson and Tiana Hawkins with a nice hedge at the top of the key, and she kicks it out of bounds, or it goes off of her shin. 13 seconds on the shot clock, and the Liberty in the backcourt. Wickham all the way to the rim gets the contact against Tiana Hawkins. That's going to be her second foul in less than about 15 seconds. Yeah, not a good foul for Hawkins, but Sammy Whitcomb, I mean, she just puts her head down, gets through three defensive players for the Atlanta Dream, and is strong-bodied to the post. Some people say that she's reminiscent of a hockey-type player with her grit <laughs> and how she just puts her head down and get in there, and we saw it on display. Well, Sammy Wickham's tougher than tough, shooting 83% from the free throw line. She's actually a part of the Australian national team as well as she knocks down the second one, so she'll be headed to Tokyo for the Olympics alongside her teammate, Rebecca Allen, who is on the team for the national, the Australian national team for the first time in her career. A foul is going to go against the Liberty. It's going to go against Kylie Shook. It's going to be her first foul. And Tiana Hawkins. And this we'll is exactly the what the Dream want to do. They want to, ha they want to have that ball action, that ball movement that gets the defense falling behind the offensive player. Right there, we saw really good ball movement that allowed Tiana Hawkins to get in front of the defender and draw that foul. Well, that bucket by Tiana Hawkins actually breaks the 7-0 run by New York. And Monique Billings checks in for Elizabeth Williams. As we mentioned before, Monique Billings the last game due to illness, non-COVID related. When you're waiting from outside and that one doesn't go. And Billings, what she brings to the table for this team, I and mean, when we talked about it, it's Kennedy Carter puts one up unsuccessfully. We talked about what Billings brings to this team with her defense, her scoring ability, and the mismatch on the guards of New York. So you can see how New York is trying to take advantage of the paint really early, trying to get those paint touches. A lot of action and pressure at the top of the key, but what a beautiful dish by Laney boys and finds Michaela. And that's one of the keys to the game, uh, defensive assignments. We talked to Mike Peterson earlier today. He talked about those few defenses that he was going to throw at New York and how our players have to be there to make the defensive assignments as Kennedy Carter goes in for the, the, lead, the layup. I was about to say easy layup, but that's easy for me to say, <laughs> sitting on the sidelines. Well, she makes everything look easy as she's going to come up with a steal as well. One-on-one -on -one with Wickham. She gets the better part of the deal. Looking for the foul as well, but two points is just going to have to do for the dream. And Mike Peterson is yelling, get back, get back. Don't worry about the call. Manija from the corner. Doesn't go in a lot of momentum with Atlanta right now. Four on one. Take advantage of it. Monique Billings does. And that's a post player that runs the floor very well. Monique Billings, she gets out in transition for those easy buckets. 6-0 run for Atlanta. I'll tell you what, it gets done on the defensive end and is led by Kennedy Carter. Getting it done. Atlanta by Atlanta brings this game within two. Atlanta Dream showing a defensive effort. Well, that's part of the keys to the game, which are presented by Scana Energy. Atlanta focus on the defensive assignments. New York take advantage of their size. Tabitha, would you say they're doing that so far? You know, I think that they're trying to do that. Switch those guards uh, or have that mismatch with the larger guards for New York and Atlanta. Um, so one of the keys, of course, for the Liberty was take advantage of the size, the length of their players as Sammy Whitcomb goes in with the stop and pop shooting close to 50% from the field. Just the energy plug for the Liberty. Makes it a two possession game for New York. Kennedy Carter is stripped on the baseline by Sabrina Unescu. Wede is deflected at the top of the key. And talk about the hustle by Monique Billings getting the ball out to Courtney Williams. And that's one of the reasons why Monique Billings 
has so many minutes for this Atlanta Dream Team. Her hustle, her defensive prowess, her tenacity. How she never gets tired and she runs the floor for this team is one of the biggest reasons why she gets so many looks. So a couple of substitutions. Odom comes in for Onyenwene on the Liberty, Liberty side and Erie McDonald checks in for Kennedy Carter for the Dream. Tiana Hawkins met with some contact at the rim by Shook. That's going to be her second foul. Tiana Hawkins will step up to the free throw line for two. And right here, Hawkins gets the on-ball screen. Goes up, gets a little contact from the body of Shook. Was underneath the basket, but Shook got her with the body, sending Hawkins to the line for two. <laughs> but back to your question, Angel. I mean, I don't think the Liberty have taken advantage of that mismatch with their guards yet. I think they've been trying to get into that motion, um, but they've had a couple looks at the three-point line between Yonescu and Whitcomb um, that have just gone down for the three-point line. We'll continue to monitor the keys and how each team is executing them. Odyssey Sims takes a trip to the bench as Crystal Bradford checks in for Atlanta. Kia Stokes also in for the Liberty. And just something to keep your eye out on. Tiana Hawkins came up hobbling just a little bit as she was walking to the free throw line. She knocks down the second one. She seems fine running back to the other end. <laughs> so four points for Tiana Hawkins. Still a lot of pressure being displayed by Atlanta at the top of the key. They lead the league in steal. So seeing if they can come up with a few against New York. That one short by Wickham at the top of the key. And Mary McDonald bringing all the pressure and pace, but that's a charge. And Sabrina Unescu just slid over, knowing, knowing yeah. what Ari wanted to do. Yeah, I, I mean, a veteran move by a second-year player on a first-year player, just sliding over, getting her feet set somewhat, and taking the charge on Ari McDonald. Blaney's shot no good, but she follows that one up with a rebound. Sabrina looking for some action underneath. Laney and Monique Billings going at each other. And Monique Billings just strips it right yeah. from her yep. and finishes for two on the other end. And Monique Billings did such an amazing job of avoiding the contact of UNESCO to not get that charge. Excellent steal, strip, and drive to the basket by Monique Billings, giving this Atlanta team a little bit more energy and momentum. And also tying the game with that bucket, 14-all. Laney passes it out once again to Wickham, and once again, she drains it. And Wickham is a player that you know has three-point ability. She's knocked down two so far this game. So now that she's knocked down two, hey, there's no excuse to leave her open anymore, right? You got to know where she is on the floor at all times. And right here, Monique Billings just muscling out Laney over the jump ball, avoids the contact by Ionescu, does not draw the charge, gets the basket, and ties the game for this team. It's like she never gets tired. And Erie McDonald and Wickham trying to hustle for the ball. There's actually an offensive foul that's going to go against Wickham. As they were trying to battle it out, they're saying that Wickham just held off. Ari McDonald on that fight as she took a tumble to the floor. Yeah, Ari McDonald, I mean, a player that's not shooting her best from the field right now, been getting to the free throw line a lot for this team, but doing a lot for Atlanta as far as the hustle and the tenacity goes. And it was on display right there, just on the floor all the time, um, hustling for those 50-50 loose balls. Talked to her earlier today, and she said that's what the game is going to come down to with two of these teams being so similar. Those 50-50 loose balls. Who can dive on the floor? Who's got more effort? Well, so far, Atlanta trying to do everything they can to dictate the pace as well. You mentioned these are respectfully two and three as far as pace. New York two, Atlanta three. Jones falls on that screen. Nothing for Courtney Williams, and then a turnover underneath for Atlanta. I think Coach Whitcomb was shouting out. She tripped her. She tripped her on that one, Jasmine Jones, so. So Monique Billings once again trying to see if she could come up with a steal. 
She's been all over the floor, Tab. <laughs> hey, you know what she's explaining to the ref right now? Hey, you've got to get out the way. I am going to be all over the place. And she tries to save it, but as she does, she's trying to avoid running into the ref saying, hey, ref, you've got to get out the way if you don't want to get hit. And that possession, too, that goes to New York also leads to a three-pointer by Benai Jelani. And that's a player you don't want to let get hot from beyond the arc. Less than 20 seconds in the game, about a four-second second differential. In game clock and shot clock, 10, Courtney Williams rises up, and she's been struggling from the floor. Kia Stokes grabs the ball down. Erie McDonald with a close steal. A lot of contact. This one will not go. And hits the rim, but Crystal Bradford picks it up. A lot of action in that last minute of the game. New York Liberty with a six-point lead over Atlanta heading into the second quarter. But let's take a look at the first quarter stats, which are presented by State Farm. And anything that stands out to you, Tab, about why Atlanta is down six? Well, first of all, it's a three-point field goal shooting. They've allowed New York to get off four of 11 three-point shots. Sammy Whitcomb, um, Betnaja Laney, and Yanescu have each hit a three-point shot, one at least. And the next thing I'm looking at are steals. Atlanta usually is the team that is leading the league in steals, which they still do. But right now, New York has more steals than Atlanta, leading them two to five. And that's not the way that Coach Peterson wants to see his team start the quarter with the turnover underneath. Wickham once again outside, and that one's going to be drained. They shot 41% from the three-point line the first contest. Well, right now, they're shooting lights out again as well. And now Sammy Whitcomb has hit three threes in this game. You got to know where she is, right? You can't leave her alone. She can never be alone any longer on this floor. As Crystal Bradford responds with a three-point shot of her own. Well, she's instant energy off the bench, and Coach just calls her a Swiss Army knife, Something, someone that can just be <laughs> on the floor, anywhere on the floor, owning those minutes as Benajah Laney going against Courtney Williams, her former teammate. Courtney Williams surveying the land a bit, trying to see if she can get her team to execute this trip down the floor. Crystal Bradford going against Laney Parker, lines it up for three, and that one doesn't go. Those are the shots that he wants his front court players to continue to knock down, too. And I don't think that was a bad uh, shot by Parker right there. I think it was a good shot, but I would love to see more ball rotation because I think after they rotated the ball, it became a little stagnant on the left side, allowing the defense to set up. Gary McDonald just saying, Tony Billings, I got this. Comes down with the <laughs> rebound and then going all the way to the rim. Close turnover, but finds Courtney Williams for the three, not a bad possession for the Dreams. Yeah, and that's something that Courtney Williams, I'm sure, is really happy to get out of her system early in this game. That's a player that when she gets hot, she'll start lighting it up from all over the floor. Courtney Williams showing why she needs to be on the all-star ballot this year, rocking the green hair. Wickham once again, and Wickham once again with a three. I think they need to go box and one. They need to add that defense <laughs> to that plethora of defenses that they've got in that arsenal for the dream. Monique Billings, the other side, but denied by Kia Stokes. And there's a whistle on the floor. And they're just going to mention the difference in the shot clock. It was reset to 24. They're actually going to reset it to 13, we were hearing. The things that we can hear on the floor now, since we're not up top. <laughs> Straining our eyes trying to see what's going on man. It's so good to be back down here and all the action With the sweat nearly bumping and dripping on you. <laughs> well, we can hear the refs now, so And the coaches as well, but excellent block there by Kia Stokes So 13 on the shot clock here McDonald top of the key pulls up mid-range and That'll look good look for her at the top of the key I think for Ari, that, that's just a part of her slowing the game down in her head. It wasn't necessarily a bad look. She had beat the defender. She was a little too strong on her release. Just understanding the pace of the game. And she continues to, to do the right things. Ari McDonald's going to take a trip to the bench. Kennedy Carter comes in, as well as Elizabeth Williams. 
for Monique Billings. But as you mentioned, Ari's still learning the game and the pace of the game. She's shown this team, too, what, is she, what she's all about. Had a couple of games where she scored back-to-back -back 15 points. Oh, yeah, the potential is definitely there. Oh, yes, absolutely. It's Jones all the way to the bucket. And Jasmine Jones is a player that, uh, you know, does not lack confidence. And she is another spark plug off the bench for New York. And she talks a lot of stuff, too, in the game. So <laughs> definitely a player who backs it up. A lot of action on the inside as Elizabeth Williams couldn't get it to fall. But Cheyenne Parker having her teammates back. So four points for Cheyenne Parker. As Kennedy Carter is going to pick up her first foul. So that slows things up just a bit. Six point lead for New York. Still Wickham left alone. Says I'll take the shot. That one doesn't go in. An offensive rebound for New York, and that's something that's interesting if you see for Atlanta, who actually do pretty well with limiting teams to one shot. Five on the shot clock, Sabrina Unescu. Double teamed, a lot of action, and Atlanta forces the turnover. Odom, Owen Courtney Williams. A lot of length on Williams at this point. Cheyenne Parker. Courtney Williams gets the ball and can't connect from the outside. And that was good ball rotation by the Dream. Just couldn't connect on the shot as they get the turnover off the Liberty. Crystal Bradford with the Euro step pass Nescu, but it's met by Kia Stokes, who has done some pretty <laughs> impressive blocks so far tonight. I mean, Kia Stokes is saying, not in my house, which is actually the Atlanta Dream's house. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Chris Bradford and the Atlanta Dream trying to find you. The Hawks are tied 1-1 in the Eastern Conference Finals against the Milwaukee Bucks. And our post-game coverage will continue on Valley Sports Southeast. Throughout the series, join Bob Rathbun and Renee Montgomery, Montgomery and our entire Hawks crew for Hawks Live Playoff Edition tomorrow night after Game 3. It will all be on Valley Sports Southeast and the Valley Sports it's been fun to watch Atlanta just breeze through and everyone that just counts them out. I don't know how much longer other teams can say it's an upset because Atlanta has been absolutely phenomenal behind Trey Young and John Collins. So many players that we can go down the line and mention the best of luck to them. I think after this season, some people will put some respect on that name. Well, uh, we'll see. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Elizabeth Williams can't connect underneath. Sabrina Unescu with the rebound. So Michaela asking for the ball at the top of the key. And an offensive foul is going to go against Kia Stokes. That is her first foul. Just trying to free up her teammate underneath. So good read. Jasmine Jones coming off that screen. So a lot was happening underneath. So it's now a turnover for the Liberty. Atlanta forced seven turnovers by the Liberty in that first quarter. We know that that's a team and that's their mantra defensively. They're so far getting it done. And Cheyenne Parker slices to the bucket. A lot of energy in the and one much needed for this team. Yeah, I love Cheyenne Parker's energy, her grit, her fight, and she does get into that mode and right here the pass off of Carter she splits the two screens finds Parker splitting the defense Stokes too late to get there and one now she's going to the line to shoot one Cheyenne Parker hits every part of the rim especially the part that counts knocks that <laughs> one down and Angel, we're seeing a lot of things, a lot of small fundamental things from Atlanta, making layups, making free throws, not allowing second chance points, getting 50-50 balls, diving on the floor, a lot of things that they missed on assignment in that Minnesota game and that heartbreaking loss that they've corrected on this game tonight. And then also understanding where the ball needs to go. You're seeing a little bit more poise offensively from Atlanta. 
Coach Peterson was mentioning at the end of the game, just putting yourselves in positions where they have the confidence to get the ball where they need to get it and run their offense. Mm -hmm. So you're seeing how defensively they're taking care of business, but also offensively, if they're taking a step in the right direction. Underneath, Shook passes it out to Sabrina Unescu, and that's short. Almost falls right in the hands, or it's actually tipped from Cheyenne Parker straight in the hands of Benajah yeah. Laney, and she'll step up to the free throw line for two. Yeah, tough break. Crystal Bradford off of the Unescu miss. Just couldn't can't hang on to the ball. Falls into the hands of Laney, who gets fouled by Crystal Parker. A little frustrated look there by Bradford and Parker because they know that rebound was theirs. Just finishing the drill, Benajah Laney knocks the first one down. It's Crystal Bradford who picks up her first foul, takes a trip to the bench, and Courtney Williams checks in. And this is that starting lineup that the Dream began the game with. How about Manija Laney? Right now, sixth in the league in points. First eight games, she had 20 or more points. Wow. So it's no surprise why her name is coming up when it comes to voting her for her first All-Star appearance. Courtney Williams stopped mid-range. Liberty doing a good job on her so far. But the only person they have to take into account is Elizabeth Williams with a nice roll to the bucket. I mean, the vision by Odyssey Sims to find her through that traffic. I'm at the same angle looking at what Odyssey Sims saw as she passed that pass, and it was not an easy one to get through. As Odin Wede completes the putback underneath the basket over two dream players. She's just tough. I mean, Odin Wede just being so efficient, mm -hmm. shooting 37% from the field, close to double figure she's averaging. A player that had 29 points against Atlanta the previous game, her career high. So they want to keep an eye out on her. Once again, Michaela all the way to the rim. And two more points. Uh, I mean, she's just a player that has really good vision. She's so versatile. She can do everything. She can shoot the deep three. She can penetrate to the basket. She's quick for a post player. She can post you up. Just so many skills as she fouls Cheyenne Parker. On Parker's move to the basket. And for Parker, I think that that's going to be her role, especially for teams like this, <laughs> taking the other posts off the dribble. Cheyenne Parker is very quick for her size, and she also can stretch defenses with how she shoots the ball from beyond the arc. So I think Cheyenne Parker is going to be one of the biggest, how should I say this, biggest assets for this Atlanta team when it comes to mismatches between posts and guards. She's definitely vital for this team. She was visibly upset with her performance in the previous game against Minnesota. She had six points as she knocks that one down. She did have seven rebounds and five steals, but offensively, she said she wants to be better for this team. Now she's sitting at eight points in this game. Definitely better so far. I would say so right out of the gate. We're seeing more of the aggression. Five on the shot clock shook. Travels, a little bit of indecisiveness for Shook at the top of the key, but that's what Atlanta needs, those de defensive stops. And you know what caused that defensive stop? The defensive tenacity <laughs> and getting to your defensive assignment. I mean, the defender rotated to Kylie Shook, which made her think twice about taking that shot, so she decided to pass it, causing her to travel. 11 turnovers for New York. The dish from Courtney Williams to Cheyenne Parker as she continues to pile Four-point lead for New York. Atlanta still chipping away at the lead there. A bump comes from Kennedy Carter, and Sammy Wickham gets the end one. And Angel, we were wondering about matchups in this game, and we'll talk about this after we get back from break, but I just want to talk about that matchup. Sammy Whitcomb taking Carter off the dribble, drawing the foul, and one. New York, 36 to 30. AT&T WNBA All-Star is back. Head over to WNBA.com slash vote or download the new WNBA app to vote daily until June 27th to see your favorite WNBA 
players take the floor in Vegas July 14th. We missed out last year since we had the wobble, but now we get the All-Star game back. They will be taking the floor against this year's Olympic team heading over to Tokyo. It's almost like a little send-off. So anyone that you vote in, I know the fans are 50%, media 25. We got coaches 25 as well. So this will be very interesting. I'm really excited about the WNBA All-Star Game coming back. Yeah, I mean, especially with all the vote Courtney shorts that we see <laughs> around the arena. <laughs> But yeah, no, definitely excited. Um, you know, I'm trying to be there, even if I'm not on staff for media. I'm just going to watch. Okay. And Kennedy Carter saying, hey, Tab, don't forget about me. She's That's trying right. to get some votes in the All-Star game as well. Laney dishes it off to Sabrina Wickham, has been on fire and continues to shoot lights out. I mean, has she missed a shot? I mean, that's hypothetical she has. Uh, I think she missed two, but my goodness. Sammy Whitcomb shooting the lights out here at Gateway Center Arena. 10 points in the first quarter. 22 points in the game. But Cheyenne Parker saying, I got a response of my own, seeing her pick it up quite a bit. And I think the last game we mentioned Monique Billings was the mis mismatch. This game, I think it's Cheyenne Parker who's the mismatch for their post. Kylie Shook is not fast enough to keep up with her. Wickham with a bit of a heat check. That one grazes the front of the rim. Courtney Williams, the high screen, pulls up for her mid-range. She's just been a little bit off in this game. One for six from the field. That's very unlike Courtney Williams. Cheyenne Parker has done her part to keep this team in the game. And I fully expect, you know, with a minute and 27 left in this half, I fully expect for there to be some locker room talk and for Courtney Williams to come out with a different performance. Uh, you know, not that she has not had the effort, but again, right now, her defensive assignment is bet Nigel Laney. And when your best player has to defend the other team's best player, that's going to take a lot out of you as Monique Billings gets another block on Yonescu. The winning plays Monique Billings brings to this team. Courtney Williams just needs the energy from the ball from Monique. Knocks her first field goal down, second field goals of the game. I think we just had to speak it up just a little bit. Just a tad. It's Benaiza Laney trying to get to her spot on the floor, draws the contact underneath. Let's take another look at this block by Monique Billings. She says, get that out of here, Ionescu. Leads to Courtney Williams, taking it down to the other end. Sees Whitcomb, crosses her over and pulls up before Shook can get there. Nothing but net. Winning plays, as we mentioned, is Monique Billings. They're so happy to have her back on the floor, missing the previous game here at home. Cheyenne Parker takes a trip to the bench. Deserves a well deserve rest for her yeah and she knocks down two two points in the first quarter right now she has 10 points for Cheyenne Parker so looking to see if she can continue to build on that in the second half as we're in the last minute of this first half Kennedy Carter finds a way to draw the contact underneath and that's exactly what the dream have got to do for the remainder of the game including the second half is don't let up on pace Kennedy Carter Tries to go past Sammy Whitcomb. Sammy Whitcomb comes back and gets her on the left arm. Good defense up until the swing. Forces Carter to get to the line where she knocks down the first of two. We mentioned it too, just for Kennedy Carter. It's very interesting as she knocks down the first free throw. Her first game back was against Minnesota just a few nights ago. and. She scored in double figures, and she said, hey, I'll give myself a C. I want to do more for this team. <laughs> then she changes. She said, look, it's my first game back. I got to be cool with myself. I'll give myself a B minus. <laughs> so I, I was cracking up at that post-game conference, and then we went on to ask Mike Peterson uh, what he thought she would have been rated as. And he said, hey, I would have rated her better than what she rated herself. But that's Kennedy. She's always going to work harder to make herself better as she has the ball with 25 seconds left in the half. Three points, three second difference in game clock and shot clock. Against Wickham, once again, pulls up and one <laughs> She got 
got a bit of a chest bump there from Monique Billings, but she was a little bit winded. Couldn't celebrate like she wanted to. But Kennedy Carter, I, I mean, shot clock winding down, takes it to two of the best players on the team, absorbs the contact, and gets the and one. I think the bigger thing, too, is just her going at Sammy Wickham, who has been lights out for New York right now. She picks up her third foul, so that's something to keep our eye out on. Eight seconds on the clock, Sabrina Unescu weaves her way, spins at the top of the key, shook, finds Michaela headed to the basket, and a foul is going to be called on the floor before the buzzer went off. And it has to be reviewed. So, so right crew now chief Billy foul. Smith is saying there is a foul on the floor against Monique Billings. They are going to take a trip to the table to see if time had expired on the clock, but it seemed like it was well before time went off the clock. Right there, Oyen Wede with... Let's see him yeah. motioning for the yeah. foul with about 0.2, point 0.3 point left on the... Fouls on 25 Atlanta. I feel like we can give him a headset and he can just call it for the fans out there. He said he's going to put 1.1 actually back on the clock. And that foul is against Monique Billings as we thought it would be. And I, I thought Oyen Wede had a wide open shot at the end of the clock um, that I thought would have she should have taken. Now going in and drawing the foul on the defensive player of the opposite team yes that's probably better <laughs> um, especially if you knock down both free throws but i do think that this is something that she kind of happened into um that kind of turned into something good that could have been bad had she just shot the ball at the end of the clock well, she can do about everything for this team she's stepping up now trying to get her seventh point and she does 1.1, they'll probably just toss it in, hold it. And Atlanta won't get a shot off. And what a half for Atlanta. I mean, they've surged back. Down three right now, but you're seeing Monique Billings walk off. Kennedy Carter was absolutely phenomenal as well. And so we'll see what adjustments have to be made for Atlanta. And one of those adjustments is definitely going to be not allow Sammy Whitcomb to shoot any shot that she wants, especially from beyond the arc. So we will see what the adjustments will be as we're getting set for our halftime interview with our sideline reporter, Shantiana Keys, who should have assistant coach for the Dream, Lakeisha Frett. Coach, uh, got off to a slow start there, but have closed it to three after a series of runs. What adjustments can you make uh, during the half? Oh, we definitely need to do, we'd like to say little things, but we got to rebound the ball, uh, take care of the ball. I thought we had too many turnovers that have. And just uh, do a little better of uh, working together on offense, moving the ball, getting the ball inside, getting some good touches and looks at the basket. And early on, it looks like you were trying to pound the ball inside. Um, how's important, how important is it for your team to establish a presence inside? I know Cheyenne has 12 points right now. Yeah, that was one of our goals going into the game, is to get the ball inside. We thought we could uh, take advantage of their size at times. Thank you so much, Coach. Back to you, Angel. Thank you. Thanks, Santiana. So we'll definitely keep an eye out on that and see if they could you know, take care of the ball and fine-tune some things defensively. Only down three going to half. Sammy Wickham has been a problem for Atlanta. We'll see if they can make that adjustment. Just moments away from the second half. And as Atlanta Dream trying to see if they can get ahead in the second half, down by three at halftime. Let's get into the first half highlights, which are presented by Jimmy Johns. You can see here defensively, it starts for the dream on that department. Kennedy Carter has been absolutely phenomenal, just trying to get things going for this team. Yeah, both offensively and defensively, she is just playing the one-on-one -on -one game, reading the defense and what they've given her. And the funny thing is, or the smart thing is, should I say, she's drawn that third foul on Sammy Whitcomb, who's been lighting it up from beyond the arc. Still a big part of this team for Atlanta. 
a big part of the game. Eight kills as they lead the league. You want to see that built upon mm -hmm. in the second half. Yeah, definitely want to get more steals. Force New York into a few more turnovers. But rebounding has got to be a sticking point for Atlanta. 19 to 12 in New York's favor. Those are your halftime stats presented by Anthem Blue Cross Blue Shield. As you'll see the same players that started the game for Atlanta on the floor again to start the second half. I'm Angel Gray alongside Tabitha Turner Wilkins, recently <laughs> married, so I'm still getting used to that. So excited for you. Thank you. Elizabeth Williams rejected at the rim by Shook. And Odyssey Sims with the matchup. Odyssey, we know that she can string points together, but her energy comes from the defensive end. Benijah Laney, hop on the inside, can't free herself up for a look. Three on the shot clock. Laney gets the ball back, and Laney knocks down the three. And but Nigel Laney is another player. If Sammy Whitcomb gets cold, you definitely don't want her to get hot from beyond the arc. She's another player that can just, is so versatile, can do everything on the floor. Cheyenne Parker draws the foul with the up and under. So Laney with 12 and Cheyenne Parker. We've seen her time and time again with the response. So a bucket on one end and Cheyenne Parker with a nice footwork to see if she can draw the foul. You know, I'm definitely believing Cheyenne Parker from the post-game conference comments about how she took that offensive and defensive challenge from Coach Peterson personal. I mean, coming out in this game, it looks like it was taken personal. She doesn't want to feel the feeling she had after missing that layup at the end of the game against Minnesota the other night. Absolutely, and Michaela Onyenwede picks up her second foul. Going back, this is the first time that Cheyenne Parker is going against the Liberty. She was out the first mm -hmm. six games due to health and safety protocol. As Michaela works her way to the rim, but an offensive foul is actually called as Elizabeth Williams steps up, took her some time to get off the floor. And Rahe Oyenwede goes by Parker, who closes out a little bit too hard, goes into Elizabeth Williams, who tries to draw the foul, and I think Liz just kind of landed on her head, got the wind knocked out of her just a little bit. So just in regards to foul trouble, with a couple of Liberty players sitting with three fouls. Michaela Onyenwede with three. And Sammy Wickham as well. Two of the highest scoring backcourt players. Courtney Williams still trying to get going from outside. Two for eight on the night. And I like what we mentioned before the half where Kennedy Carter had drawn that third foul on Sammy Wickham right before the half ended. I think in order to take her out of the game, that's going to be the play. Be aggressive, go downhill right at Whitcomb. And that's exactly what Odyssey does to Elizabeth Williams. Beautiful dish for two. The veteran with such good vision. Bet to another vet. She knows Elizabeth Williams will most likely compete that play underneath the basket if she can deliver it on point. Then how about the Williams? Almost comes up with a steal. Sabrina with the three. Ooh, that can deflate a defense. Yeah, Sabrina Nescu finally hits a three-point shot. Her defensive teammate might have gotten away with a bit of a offensive foul holding back Odyssey Sims from getting there. But you know what? Three points is three points for UNESCO. Sabrina with six points on the night. Another turnover for New York. It's going to be their 13th on the night. And Kennedy Carter with a nice roll. You can literally see the game slowing down in her head. I, I mean, my goodness, just to take your time on that shot, to know where you are on the floor, to recognize the defense and spin. I would have been dizzy going up with that <laughs> shot at that point. Well, what can't Kennedy Carter do? Michaela working the baseline quite a bit. Draws the foul as well against Cheyenne Parker. She doesn't play like a rookie. She doesn't, and she's fearless. And, and Cheyenne Parker has got to be smarter than the rookie on the floor and stay on the floor. Cheyenne, Cheyenne Parker got that foul because as she went up, Oyenwede did a really good pump fake, got Parker in the air, and drew the foul. Parker's a vet. Has to be smarter than that. So Parker takes a trip to the bench, and Monique Billings, another UCLA grad, steps in. We'll see that matchup quite a bit. Two Bruins going at each other. Sims 
finds Courtney Williams. And the tie-up up top. Great defense by yeah. Sammy Wickham. Yeah, very good defense by Sammy. Way to get her hands into the passing lanes without drawing the foul. And right here, Courtney Williams thinks she has the lane, but Sammy Wickham comes right from behind and ties the ball up. Very reminiscent of a hockey-type player with her grit and how she just gets in the spaces where you don't think she should be able to fit. She's just so tough. Career highs and points, rebounds, and assists. As that tip is going to Atlanta. Right away, they go to Monique Billings underneath against Laney. That one doesn't go, and Shook comes down with the rebound. Oh, just so much hard work on the moves with the footwork for Billings right there at the rim. Heartbreaker to miss the layup right there. So they come down with the rebound. New York is out rebounding Atlanta 23 to 13. So there's a tip on the inside by the dream, but it still once again gets tipped out and the Liberty convert. Yeah, I, I mean the ball was swung four times. The dream rotated to their defensive assignments three out of those four times on the fourth one was the one that Kylie Shook was able to get that shot up from 15 foot. Benaja Laney running the lane. Doesn't get that to go. That rolls off the rim. Monique Billings looking to advance the ball. Finds Odyssey Sims. And right here, Atlanta has to find a way to get a stop, also get a score. Get the momentum going back in their favor because that UNESCO three-point shot really got them going for New York. In New York right now, Tabitha looks like they're quicker to the ball yeah. on these rebounds. Yeah, they are. And that's the difference in momentum shifts. You know, one player hits a shot that ignites the entire team's energy and it can get you going as Oyen Wede slashes to the basket for the backdoor layup. Knowing that Benajah Laney is going to attract a lot of attention, she does just that on the weak side and that's a perfect dish or cut to the basket by Michaela. Great awareness, and that bucket also makes this a 10-point lead for the Liberty. And on the other end, just an unforced turnover by the Atlanta Dream, so the Liberty now have gotten the ball back for two possessions in a row. So 13-6 run for the Liberty, and they've been able to execute a dime by Sabrina Unescu to Shook. And that's a defensive assignment that was missed, which is why Mike Peterson wants a timeout right now. It was right in front of us. Defensive assignment missed by Kennedy Carter on the backside. We saw it. Pay attention to defensive assignments. We'll see if they can fine tune. 2 Tonight's presentation of Atlanta Dream Basketball is brought to you by Coca-Cola. Well, Liberty on a roll right now. 7-0 run by them in the last two minutes. 15-6 run this quarter. Tabitha, quick timeout for Coach Peterson. You said defense was going to be the key and the reason for that timeout. What do you want to see or what do you think was discussed in that timeout? Exactly what he told us in the pregame. It was a missed defensive assignment on the weak side that got the Liberty an easy open layup. I mean, all the defense was shifted to the left side of the court. And the offensive player was left alone underneath the basket. As Monique Billings gets the rebound and goes back up for the two. She's been the difference maker for this team so far. Two for ten from the field for Courtney Williams. But Monique Billings stepping up when her team needs her the most. And that's what Monique does. I mean, she's all over the ball. And a turnover by New York leads to Courtney Williams stopping and popping, doesn't get the shot. It's interesting about Courtney Williams. She, oh, a lot of contact underneath. Oh, wow. Odyssey Sims is on the floor, and then a lot of contact on the side between Laney and Tiana Hawkins. And the collision between Laney and Hawkins was. So we'll go with Odyssey first, because that's the first one that occurred. So right there, when Oyen Wede went up, her left arm came down over Sim's face. And as we look at this one, Yonescu gets it to Laney. Laney lands awkwardly before she gets the ball, and then Tiana Hawkins goes 
right into Laney on the floor. So a double collision, I think it was inadvertent by the look on Tiana Hawkins' face. She came up kind of surprised as well. So the foul is going to be on Tiana Hawkins. They're going to actually review the foul as well. So the play is under review, as we mentioned before, just with Tiana Hawkins, just with the collision and the timely collision at that point. But it's good to see her walking off because yeah. they were tending to her leg at that point. Odyssey Sims is now off the floor for the dream at the end of the bench still with the trainer, and she's just pointing to her mouth just quite a bit. And I think those are real tears welling up from her eyes because right here, another angle. Yeah, Oyenwede comes across the left side of Sim's face with her left arm. So even with that play, the only play that's under review right now is this one right here. Tiana Hawkins coming at yeah. Benajia Laney. Awkward bend to her left leg in which they were tending to. So it was great news, as we alluded to before, to see her walking off the court mm -hmm. in her own will. As we get news, we will give it to you as well. It seems like New York has received information about what the officials have come up with. And it almost seems like Laney had kind of was on her way down <laughs> when Hawkins was coming at her full speed. And I think that was part of what made it so awkward when they kind of landed and collided together. But like you mentioned, good to see everybody on their feet. Um, faces are still a little bit red <laughs> after this kind of collision right here. Looks almost like a football play. So crew chief looks over and said, we got you. We're going to wait just a bit to hear what they have. So we're, we're told by the referee, Jeffrey Smith, actually, is that it's going to be a flagrant foul, penalty one, flagrant one. So what we were just told is 24 for New York will step up to the free throw line for two shots. But I think he meant Benija Laney. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he meant situation. 22. Yes. But flagrant foul on Tiana Hawkins and she's looking for an explanation, of course. And yes, it was a tough play, a tough collision. Um, but from the look on her face and how she came up, I definitely do think it was inadvertent. But nonetheless, good to see Laney out here shooting the free throws. Doesn't knock down the first one. Tiana Hawkins just tapping her a bit, knowing it wasn't ill-advised as Jasmine Jones checks in for Sabrina Unescu. That was just a scary event, honestly, yeah. just watching that. You know that both players are just doing so well at this point. You hate injuries all together, but especially for both of these players. And Benajah Laney, good to see her back on the floor. Jones with a wild shot underneath, can't draw the foul there. And Kennedy Carter has the ball coming out of the pack. So less than halfway in the third quarter and a travel is called on Tiana Hawkins as there was a little bit of noise in the arena as well that everyone was trying to work through. I'm looking at you like, is that you? Uh, I was looking at you like, that's you. There's a little bit of a ring going on and Tiana's looking at the bench was like, that, that y'all? Is that y'all? We'll, like, <laughs> We'll charge that foul against the arena or that turnover rather. But since we can't do that, that is the 10th turnover for Atlanta and New York continues to work the ball to the paint. And I think, you know, it's on the rotation from the wing. So they're rotating the ball from the top of the key to the wing, then rotating it back. And right there, Whitcomb sees Jasmine Jones just slide down into the basket from the top of the key. They're just slashing straight to the rim and moving without the ball, and that's the biggest difference for New York. They're moving without the ball and not waiting for the ball to come to them. 
Jasmine Jones misses the first one. Two points for her so far on the night. One for three. You mentioned how she's consistent and fearless, knocks that one down. She's had four games where she scored in double figures. She had 17 versus Vegas. That was her season high. And as Courtney Williams has the ball, and they've done a good job containing her so far in this game. Kennedy Carter, though, they need to find an answer. Yeah, yeah, and Kennedy Carter did exactly what Kennedy Carter had to do to get her team a score on the board. She put her head down, took it straight to the rim, went up strong and got the two. So 14 points for Kennedy Carter. You can see how she just works her way, the body control that she has. And Sammy Whitcomb not wanting to get that fourth foul just says, hey, you got it. I don't know if Kennedy Carter's coming at me half the time. I'd be like, you got it. <laughs> She's doing the same thing. Wickham with a beautiful dish to Michaela Onyenwede. Again, moving without the ball. Onyenwede didn't have the ball right there, but she slashed to the rim and was the recipient of a pass for an easy two. Kennedy Carter now guarded by Benija Laney, a matchup you want to see. The finger roll doesn't go, but none other than Monique Billings with oh, the dish. She had been actually tough. Deanna Hawkins underneath. Oh my goodness, but has she been tough on these offensive rebounds? Shook will try her effort from the outside once again, but she is 0 for 3 from outside. Tiana Hawkins on the other side responds with a three of her own. And, and I did not expect for Tiana Hawkins to make that much welcome three by the Dream. Hawkins is shooting last in the league in three-point percentage. So that's a welcome sigh of relief for her. Maybe can get her going back on the three-point shot. And a welcome sigh of relief for Coach Peterson, as he says Tiana Hawkins and Cheyenne Parker have to be that for his team. Monique Billings tries to deflect, but instead gets a nice defensive stop. Atlanta still working in transition. Kennedy Carter can't get that one to fall. And I think Shook might have gotten away with a foul there on Carter's arm. You mentioned the pace of both of these teams. New this York looking to push it. <laughs> Two minute mark here in the third quarter. Jasmine Jones lining up finds Michaela Onyenwede, but Excellent. too early. Perfect defense by Bradford. Excellent defensive assignment right there by Bradford, who takes it in at the other end. Spin moves on Jasmine Jones and lays it in the basket for the and one. Crystal Bradford. So we mentioned instant offense for Atlanta. Crystal Bradford, not just with the defensive series here, Tab, but finishing it with a nice move underneath. Exactly, I mean, her confidence ever since being back in the league struts off and says, hey, don't try me like that. I can get that <laughs> basket. But I mean, from beginning on the defensive end down here, for her to intercept the pass, a pass that they've been doing, going to all game, that slash game to the rim has got New York this lead in this game. Crystal Bradford finally recognized it and said, hey, I'm gonna intercept that pass and take it down to the other end for the and one. Atlanta on an 8-2 run. Crystal Bradford checks in. They see the energy. Sammy Wickham can't connect underneath. This has been a very physical game. Very. But both teams getting up what we love to see and Kennedy Carter right away knows that we're going to get the ball back. And we're taking another look at Crystal Bradford's interception on the defensive end of the floor and she comes down, spin moves on Jasmine Jones, take it right to Shook, a bigger post player <laughs> and walks off mean mugging everybody saying, hey, I got this, I'm back. I've seen that face when you were in Georgia Tech a couple of times <laughs> when you got an and one. No surprise there. <laughs> Girl, you look, now, now you're just trying to pump me up because you know you ain't see my face. I was on the bench. I saw yours, though. <laughs> so Erie McDonald comes in the game for Courtney Williams. As Kennedy has one more free throw and drains it. Four-point game. game. Yeah, cuts it down to a four-point game. That's your job to say that. <laughs> We work together. This is a team effort. As Atlanta putting on a run, and Sammy Wickham left alone on the outside. Bad news for Atlanta. I mean, she is just on fire tonight. She cannot miss a shot. 25 points for Sammy Wickham. 
She had 19 points in their first meeting, five threes in that game. It doesn't seem like she's cooled off much. Crystal Bradford dials it up. That one bounces off the back iron, and Jasmine Jones comes down with the rebound. If she would have hit that one, I probably would have got up from the scores table because <laughs> the way Crystal Bradford just comes back and responds on the offensive end, it's just been impressive to me. 40 seconds in the quarter left. Michaela faking up, but instead draws the foul. So that's the third foul that's going to go against Kennedy Carter. And as the team is in the penalty for both sides, Michaela will step up for two. You know, Angel, I will say this. There's going to be quite a few Epsom salt baths tonight. <laughs> um, <laughs> all these players out here are going to be sore. I, I mean, everybody's just getting on the floor, sacrificing their bodies. 50-50 balls are, you know, everybody's on the floor trying to get to them. Going off a rebound, they both teams know how important this game is, and both teams are trying to snap a two-game losing streak. A lot on the line as they're trying to work their way to. Not a lot of games left before that Olympic break. Trying to find their way in the standings to be pushed up over dribbling for Ari McDonald and Sammy Wickham just picks her pocket. Right here, the Dream need to get a stop. Approaching the 10 second mark in the quarter. Five on the shot clock. Laney with the pump fake. Laney with the spin. Laney with two. Beautiful move. So Kennedy Carter is just gonna dribble to half and just pick the ball up and you can see the frustration <laughs> on their faces to get things done defensively. Atlanta, six for 18 in this quarter. Let's see if they can fine tune it to last frame. Well, we're back. New York Liberty on fire in that third quarter to close, and they just went on a run. Atlanta cut it to four, and then they just went on a run of their own for the Liberty, really taking advantage of those threes. But Tabitha, at the end of the day, here are the third quarter stats, which are presented by Court Furniture Rentals. What stands out to you there? I mean, of course, the three-point field goal shooting, like you mentioned, their offense is predicated around three-point shooting, but the rebounding and the assist. This is why the Liberty are on top. They're out-rebounding the Dream by nine rebounds, some of those offensive rebounds, and the assist, which to me says they're, op they're moving the ball more, getting more people involved, and not playing one-on-one -on -one basketball which sometimes is what the dream can kind of get caught up in doing, one-on-one -on -one basketball. We'll see the adjustments as the little two-man game. A lot of action underneath with Laney. She's had a very nice game so far tonight. Kia Stokes tips the ball to herself. And the rebounds continue to build for the Liberty. And it's the second chance points tab. And it was literally, we came back with that stat line and it was literally picture perfect what they just did. They moved the ball, got an offensive rebound, continued to move the ball, and eventually got an open shot. Well, Tab, just going back to that as well, how many rebounds have they brought down and got second chance points off of as well? So six for Atlanta, New York with nine second chance yeah. points. And there's a 13 point lead, so that would be a four point differential if not for those nine points off of second chance points. Menaja Laney just continues to apply the pressure. Three fouls on Crystal Bradford. And Menaja Laney just making a home at the free throw line. And you know, I know Cheyenne Parker, you know, she was having a good first half. I feel like as she comes to the scores table to check in that she was one of the better defenders on Bet Nigel Laney. Um, I thought when Courtney Williams was on her, she was a little bit less efficient. I, I, when I say a little bit less efficient, that didn't mean she didn't score. She was just not as efficient as hitting every shot like she's been doing. Um, but I would like to see what Courtney Williams and or Cheyenne Parkner does defensively against Laney from here on. Laney with 18 points, six for eight from the free throw line. 
as Courtney Williams checks in the ball game as well. Still looking to get some type of a rhythm for Courtney Williams. Only five points on the night and another turnover, costly turnover here in the fourth quarter. And I almost thought that was off of Whitcomb's leg and, and that Eric McDonald should have just let it go out of bounds. But you're right, another unforced turnover for Atlanta off a bad pass. So Liana Odom comes in for Michaela Onyenwede. You see the adjustment starting to build and what players are going to see defending one another. It's crunch time here in the fourth quarter. Excellent. Excellent charge by Ari McDonald. What happens to you offensively does not have to predicate what happens to you defensively. If you don't get it on the offensive end, what do you do? You get it back defensively. And Ari McDonald did exactly what she was supposed to do. She got her foot to the baseline and cut it off, took the charge. Dream ball. The bench for Atlanta as well, stepping up Courtney Williams. If it's not tough, it's not for Courtney. She knocks that one down. And that's what the Dream need right now, those quick scores, but they can't give it up at the other end as Leona Odom converts two at the other end of the court. Everyone said they went at pace. Well, you got it. Ari McDonald tries to toss that one out. She does find a teammate in Courtney Williams, but that draws the front iron. And Kia Stokes has cleared the board for her team so far tonight. Stokes has just done so many things between block shots and rebounding the ball and just being a defensive presence, just done a lot for this New York team. Six rebounds so far, her, so far for her tonight. Seems like she's had 12 the way she's been cleaning it up. Courtney Williams tries to rise up, finally get that to fall. It's Courtney Williams time. I mean, that mid-range game is just dangerous. That one dribble stop and pop, she's almost money every single time from there. Sammy Wickham with a nice pass out to Jones, but that one touches the top of the backboard. So that's going to be Atlanta Dream Ball. Ari McDonald comes out with Kennedy Carter. And watch out, Shakina Strickland checks in as well for the first time tonight for Crystal Bradford. You're signaling the three-point shooting or just shooting overall? Well, we know that's what she does very well. Exactly. I mean, we saw her coming in, and immediately it said to me, hey, Atlanta's trying to get some scores on the board, cut it down. Threes are worth more than twos. And Shakina Strickland is a bona fide three-point shooter as Courtney Williams gets her shot blocked by Leona Odom underneath the basket. Courtney Williams tried everything she could to get herself freed up underneath the basket, but Odom in her link just a little bit too much. 6-2 Odom coming over Courtney Williams in her 5-8 frame. <laughs> But Courtney Williams says, I'll quiet the crowd. <laughs> Not this crowd right, specifically, this crowd. but for Stokes, the bench. She quiets the bench on the other side. Shooting over a much larger defender than her. So Courtney Williams only had five points at the half. Now she's in double figures, but it's the response from New York. I know that on our call earlier, we were talking about who dictates the pace first and what that looks like. And right now, New York, how they've just been slashing into the paint. A nice dish on the inside to Kia Stokes. And that one's going to go against Strickland. Yeah, I mean, New York has just been the aggressor the entire game. They have not let up defensively or offensively. And, you know, we talk about Atlanta not wanting to turn games into half-court games. I think that third quarter was turned into a half-court game. Um, it, slowed a, it slowed the team down and expanded the lead. So Atlanta is now back to playing their true game, that fast-paced back-and-forth stop-and-pop game. And um, I think they will have a little bit more success. Well, Shook checks in. Free throw goes down for them. Atlanta trying to respond. In celebration of LGBTQ plus pride presented by Deloitte, the WNBA will collaborate with GLSEN and Fanatics on an exclusive line of pride apparel, including Fanatics branded WNBA t-shirts. All WNBA proceeds will benefit GLSEN and fans can purchase the shirts at WNBAstore.nba.com. It's Pride Night here at Gateway Center Arena. We have our towels. You've seen them waving around. It's very fun getting to speak with Jamie Ferguson, the executive director of the Atlanta Pride Committee, and talking about all the things on the docket and the Atlanta Pride Parade that's coming up as well. So we appreciate her time as Atlanta tries to bounce back 
after two games skid and pick up a win here against New York. A block is called underneath as Courtney Williams has a nice take to the bucket. Yeah, and Courtney Williams has got the game plan down pack. Take the ball to the rim. It's literally that simple. They're either going to get fouled, get a score, or draw a charge. And, you know, hopefully you get fouled and or get a score. But right now she's being rewarded with two free throws at the line. So Shook picks up her third foul. As Courtney Williams is trying to get herself going late in this game. Something to note, too, as Benajah Laney is on the floor, we haven't seen Odyssey Sims return as well. Just hoping for the best for yeah. her. Took that hit to the face last quarter. Was wincing in pain as a return. So Cheyenne Parker goes up for the block, and Odom draws the foul, but Cheyenne Parker slow to get up. I mean, just a physical game. Odom goes into Cheyenne Parker's gut, her ribs with her knee. Parker still on the ground. And let's see it from a different angle right here. Odom's knee goes right into Cheyenne Parker's stomach, chest area, and she is literally struggling to breathe. Maybe she's got the, the wind knocked yeah. out of her. Yeah. The athletic trainer for Atlanta, Natalie Trotter, has been very busy in the second half of oh the game. Goodness. And it's causing the referees to review the play now. So once again, the officials are going to take a trip to the monitors as that play is under review. Cheyenne Parker still being tended to. And I actually like when there's replays that happen for plays like this because from the eye, from the first eye, it looks like Cheyenne Parker draws the foul. We don't know the outcome now, but from different angles after replaying it and seeing her reaction on the floor, she struggles to breathe. When you look at it from different angles, it kind of changes your perspective of who fouled who, especially when Odom leads with that knee. And we can clearly visibly see Cheyenne Parker have the wind knocked out of her. I think it's just the body as well, the, the intense. Cheyenne Parker in, in obvious pain. Um, but if it's not malicious, I think that's something yeah. that they're looking for, the intent of it all. And so I think we're walking away with the foul. Crew Chief Billy Smith says it's just a common foul. Didn't take them very long to review. And Cheyenne Parker is actually still on the bench being tended to. Teammates checking on her as well. And sometimes that happens, you know, th this is a contact sport. It's very physical. Um, you know, I've had five knee surgeries Jeez, <laughs> from that. inadvertent plays and hits, um, you know, had scratched eyes and, you know, my entire right hand is bigger than the left hand because it's been jammed, broken <laughs> and everything. So, you know, it's something where, you know, those plays weren't malicious, but it's just a contact sport and it, it just comes with the territory. I'm going to have to put you on the injury report for next season Man. with all these things that you just mentioned. This is why I'm over here with you. <laughs> Kennedy Carter <laughs> shaking her hand quite a bit, but gets the bucket for Atlanta. It's go time for them as they're down 11. Plenty of time here on the clock with just over six minutes left in the fourth. 11, 11 points is what, three threes and a two or <laughs> five twos and a free throw or what? <laughs> a couple <laughs> of ways you can get yeah. there. <laughs> Sabrina Unescu. Three. And one. And those are the buckets you don't want to yeah. see go down for the Liberty if you're the dream. Yeah, UNESCO was still at that six point mark, which is where Atlanta held her for the last game. But for a player like this that can get hot from beyond the arc and just has that drive, that grit in her system, you don't want them to get hot. But excellent deep three by Sabrina UNESCO completing the four point play at the free throw line. Four fouls on Kennedy Carter as she continues to push the points up on the dream. Sabrina Unescu with the bucket and once coming off the bench, stepping up for her team. Kennedy Carter can't get that one to go, but a lot of contact at the top of the key, but that's friendly fire there as Monique Billings runs into Ooh. Carter. Oh my goodness, Angel. I mean, just so many bodies on the floor. <laughs> Five on the shot clock. Kennedy Carter with the mid-range and that one short. Sammy Whitcomb once again comes down with the rebound. That's going to be her fourth, her fifth on the night. 25 points to add to that as well. 
Foul at the top of the key is Benajah Laney was trying to demand the ball and Shakina Strickland, we've seen different looks on Benajah Laney and Shakina Strickland now has two. And Strickland has a bit of a smile on her face. I think she looked at the bench and was trying to say, hey, there was a bit of acting in there, but nonetheless, Benajah Laney's just been excellent all over in this game as she drills the first free throw. We already mentioned just Benajah Laney in the year that she's been having. Well, it was very interesting to see how her mother as well, Yolanda Laney, was an All-American guard at Cheney State for Coach Vivian Stringer. Her, out of Rutgers, Benajah Laney, also played for Vivian Stringer as well. So both being led in a great way, taught how to fight. So you gotta know if her mom went through it, she's gonna go through it and she continues to show why she should be an All-Star this season. So what you're saying is our kids might have to go to the colleges <laughs> that we went to <laughs> if the coach is still there. Gotcha. That makes sense. Vivian makes Stringer, sense. one of the absolute best. She's still with Rutgers, bringing up the next. Wickham, no hesitation, fires off and why not? All right, well that, I don't even know what to say about that one because Shakina Strickland was right there in her face and Sammy Wickham just let it fly and knocked it in. I mean, this, this woman, I was about to say this kid, but this woman has literally been lights out today here in Atlanta. 28 points for Sammy Wickham. She has made everyone a believer here in this arena tonight. And she's been the star of the show, leading all in both teams in points, seven threes on the night. And that's something that they want to improve on as well because in Minnesota mm -hmm. had other players going off in the three-point line as well. Yeah, and you see it right there. Shakina Strickland was right in her face. Her vision was blocked, but Sammy Wickham just shot right over the bigger defender and knocked it in, much like she's been doing for the entire night this game. Five on the shot clock. Kennedy Carter working the baseline, cutting into the lead. 18-point lead for the Liberty, 20 their biggest lead on the night. And mind you, Angel, as Benajah Laney hits a three and then the Dream have an unforced turnover. But Benajah Laney and the other guards for this team, whoever's a guard, Odom or Laney, they are bigger guards than Atlanta's guards. And so that size differential has been one of the biggest disparities when it comes to matchups in this game. 21 point lead for the Liberty, who have absolutely been lights out from the three point line. 40% that they're shooting from the three point line, that is a turnover there for them. And that's something where Atlanta is happy to have the ball back in their hands. But the question is, how can they pick things up throughout this game? They haven't been able to convert or string enough plays together. Yeah, it's like they don't have four quarters to put together. If they play a full, complete four quarters, this team can play with anybody. But that third quarter definitely hurt this dream team. And think about it too, as Elizabeth William has the ball on the block against Shook underneath, trying to get something going, but hits underneath the backboard and Sammy Wickham, of course, was gonna slow things down as they definitely have the reins here in the fourth quarter, less than three minutes to go. But we're seeing even how it's just been a tough night as Benajah Laney continues to build on this lead. Courtney Williams, 31 points against them in overtime in the first game, struggling from the floor tonight, five for 17, but has 12 points. But it's been a tough one so far, but Benajah Laney is tougher than tough. The Atlanta Braves' next telecast will be tomorrow afternoon as the Braves take on the Cincinnati Reds at the Great American Ballpark. Coverage begins at 12.30 Eastern on Valley Sports Southeast and the Valley Sports app. So we'll definitely be following all Atlanta teams. Hawks also in the Eastern Conference Finals will be home as well, but a few players left the game for the Dream. And so our very own Shantiana Keys gives us an update on the injuries. Shantiana? Yes, Angel. So Odyssey Sims, uh, as you remember earlier in the fourth, took a uh, arm to the face, and she will be out the remainder of the game, we're told. And Cheyenne, uh, we saw her head back to the locker room. She has returned to the bench. We're unsure if she will be back in the game. Back Thank to you. Thanks, Shantiana. So that's a, a blow for Odyssey Sims. 
as well as Cheyenne Parker, as we saw her put on a very, yeah. you know, impressive first half. Odyssey Sims just that dog for them defensively, but for this game, less than three minutes. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I think this one's gonna be a wrap, but I like the fight that I see in Kennedy Carter. I, I mean, the look on her face, she doesn't know what score it is. She said, I'm just gonna keep playing and keep going at you. And that's why you have her on your team. One of those players you love to go in the foxhole with, but that's what it comes down to is Benijah Laney as she taps Crystal all, Bradford. First What's going all, on here? <laughs> first of all, if somebody just shoots a three in my face, I'm sorry, I'm not dapping them up. Crystal Bradford tries to respond with a three of her own, but my goodness, I, I mean, this New York team is just shooting lights out in the faces of the defenders who are right in their face with the arms up. So Benijah Laney with 28 points, 13 points in the fourth quarter. She's having one heck of a night as Kennedy Carter comes up with the bucket on the other end. But going back to Benijah Laney, I know that we were talking to Coach. Obviously, she was mm -hmm. here last year with the Dream. And one person that worked with her every single day on her game, and you saw the improvement, was Coach Peterson. And yeah. he said, we have this inside joke where we say, I'm not surprised. That I'm the least surprised person on the planet. He gave her a hug in New York. He said, I just look at her every single time, and we make sure that we keep in close contact. But everything that she's doing is because she puts the work in. Exactly. I mean, there's nothing, you know, that surprises him. Like you said, it's surprising to everyone else how she just came out as most improved player in 2020. As Eric McDonald knocks down a three from the corner for the dream. But, you know, as you mentioned, you know, even before you got here today, I got here just a couple minutes before. Um, but, you know, Mike Peterson was down here hugging Bet mm -hmm. then too, and it was all love um, from the two of them. So, you know, I'm sure he's proud of the progress that she's had um, coming out here beating his team and knowing that those are the moves that he taught her. Yeah, Shook comes down with the rebound. Aaron McDonald with a nice dish pass to Crystal Bradford. It's very interesting. Coach Peterson also said, you know, Benizia Laney is a talker, too. She's tough. She's yeah. a fighter. She was also in the all- you know, defensive first team as well last year. So it's not just offense with her. She gets it done defensively as well and talks about the balance that she wants. But he said she came on our bus still talking trash <laughs> to one of her closest friends and Courtney Williams always going back and forth with one another. But Benijah Laney will have a lot that she can talk about after this game. 28 points for Benijah Laney. Tough night for Courtney Williams. 12 points, five for 17. If you want to go down the quarters, five points in the first quarter, four points in the second quarter, six points in the third quarter, three points in the fourth. So she has just completely erupted in this fourth quarter, Benijah Laney. And there was an interesting stat, Angel, that I was reading today where Benijah Laney has assisted on 32% of her teammates' baskets when she's on the floor. That means that whenever she's on the floor, any offense that's going around as they're passing the ball around, anybody who scores, she assists on 32% of those shots. So, that's almost a third of their shots so for one player. Everyone that loves <laughs> analytics, there you go. Tavis, thank you for the breakdown there. And she just finds a way to be an impact that's on the other end. Atlanta Dream just trying to find things that Shakina Strickland can't connect outside, but Kennedy Carter just going up to her after Shakina Strickland hasn't seen a lot of time very sporadically, she's been inserted into games, but knows that she's called upon for she that three ball. Yeah. But Kennedy Carter just trying to keep the morale high for this team. Doing all she can. I mean, you know, in her press conference post game after that Minnesota game, you know, she was just talking about how her job is to keep her team motivated. Her job is to say next play, look to the next play. When we get gassed, we get in trouble, and that's where we're not at our best. And I think that that's been part of the issue here in that third quarter. And going to the fourth, we can obviously, visibly see some of the dream players just a little more tired um, than the New York players. So I think that might be a little bit of it. When you get tired mentally, your mental goes. So Atlanta's still trying to find a way to bounce back. They've already dropped two. It seems like this one is going to take them to three as they build on the turnovers, but them just trying to find ways to close out games. New York was hungry for a win, both teams specifically. But we already mentioned at the top of the game how New York has dropped 
four of their last five games, and this was a big one for them. We talked about standings, we talked about morale, but for them to come into the Gateway Center, this is the first of two games that they'll see against Atlanta. So we'll see them again in just a few days. They have a back-to-back -back against Atlanta, and it's all Liberty. And if you want to get specific, it was all Sammy Wickham, 28 points. Michaela Onyenwede with 18 points, and Benijah Laney, 28 points. So points, 100. That was the highest. But now, just one point below. So that is the player of the game presented by Arby's, Sammy Wickham, who has been phenomenal. I'll let you take over for the rest. I mean, Sammy Wickham, she shot NBA range threes in the face of the Atlanta Dream defenders. Sammy Wickham doing everything to will this New York Liberty team to the win. Liberty on top, 99 to 78 over the Dream. That's your final.